I undid the drive belt, undid uh, both linkages that go to the carburetor and the engine brake. Let's take the motor off. go. Motor's out. Let's set it aside. Now we have a dirty old deck. Seeing as how the motor's not on it, I can just throw this thing outside for the time being. Now the reason why I drained all the oil and pulled the motor is because it's going to be a little bit easier for me to work on. Uh, the very first thing I want to do here, and I'm going to pull the valve cover off, I guess. If you guys look really, really closely, you'll see a bunch of oily residue right there. So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull the valve cover off, or head. I forget which one it is. I think it's a valve cover. Um, and then I'm going to have a look at what the valves look like. Because so that will tell me whether or not, I mean, if there's a bunch of oily residue all over the exhaust valve, well, that might be, uh, might be the fact that there's oil getting into the, cr into the uh, combustion chamber, and that's not good. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull the valve cover off. I'm just going to refer to it as that. These fuckers are always on here pretty tight. Actually, they're not on there that tight. What am I doing this for when I have an air ratchet? Ooh. Already, I did already take a peek. Not looking good for our motor. There's a ton of oil coming out of the exhaust valve, but it's all in the combustion chamber. In fact, you can kind of see right here where it's been leaking out. You guys really can't, but you can kind of see down there all that residue where it's been leaking out. And that's not good. Maybe this thing's supposed to have much higher compression than I thought, but that's uh, that's kind of a bad thing. Well, maybe I'll go ahead and pull the crankcase cover off and have a look inside. So let's go ahead and get this cover off. I don't know why I didn't buy one of these sooner. Okay guys, so the next step is to go ahead and remove the pulley. There we go, perfectly good blade mount here. Go ahead and set that aside. Actually, I'll uh, stick that uh, bolt back in here so I don't lose it. So now the next step is to go ahead and remove, if I can, this thing. Remove our belt, set both of them aside. The belt's actually still good. Okay, so let's go ahead and tighten this thing up, or loosen it up rather. Oh, they are on there tight. All right, guys, so I did manage to get this pulley off. I'll show you guys how I did it. Basically, you have your flywheel key down here, one of them. And then on the other side here, you can see that it's got a keyway. So that's how it was on. I don't really want to stick this thing back on all the way because it was a pain in the ass to get off. But I didn't have to use a puller. What I did was I turned the motor upside down so this part here is on the ground, the bolt. I stuck this 7 8 wrench right there. Now this of course was closer, in fact it was right at the uh, top of the wrench here. And with this part on the ground, I whacked this end of the wrench really hard with a hammer. Sure enough it moved it. I tried every other way to get this thing off. I tried pullers, I tried you know, penetrating oil, which I think helped a little bit. And uh, what ended up getting it off was brute force. So I did that on the other side as well, like that. And I alternated on those sides as well. Um, honestly, it only took about maybe four or five good whacks with the hammer and it came right off. Go ahead and take these other two bolts off that I forgot to take off. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna try and split this case, which I might need to whack this with a hammer as well. And now. This thing might need some coaxing with a hammer. Yeah, 
and then it's popped off. Let's go ahead and remove the crankcase cover. Looking inside of it, I don't see any evidence of any broken metal or anything. So now we can see we have the governor here, just kind of looking it over. I don't see anything that's outright broken. Now, in all honesty, guys, if this thing is toast, it's not worth rebuilding. A lot of these smaller engines just, you know, you never, you never get your rate of return on them or anything. Um, what I'm going to have to do is end up pulling the governor bits out. So in order to do that, that's not even a bolt. There we go. It comes off. Go ahead and set that in there. See if I can get this guy off. This looks like a camshaft. <laughs> that's amazing, guys. You're going to love this. This is actually... Our first time tearing into a motor, mower motor like this, and it's got a plastic camshaft. Yeah, I've never seen a plastic camshaft gear, and I've never seen plastic camshaft lobes before. But then again, this is a lawn mower and not a car. But it's still kind of surprising to see. So I'm going to go ahead and set that aside as well. Okay, so now that you guys can see, I'm going to go ahead and pull the lower cap off. It's not on there too tight, amazingly. There's bolt number one out, bolt number two. Let's go ahead and see if we can pull the cap off. This guy might need some uh, help with a hammer. The rod cap looks good. Set that aside. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can shove the piston through the, the cylinder. In order to do that, I'm just going to push it out like this with the motor. Swing the crankshaft around just a hair more. And maybe I can... There she is. There's definitely some scoring along the skirts. Nothing's outright broken, but what I'd need to do is check the gap in between the rings. The side of the cylinder wall doesn't look too good. I'm going to go ahead and thread the uh, cap back in place. Looks like there's a little bit of scoring right here. Nothing too terrible. So I'm going to go ahead and stick the cap back on. But I can't pull the crankshaft out yet because I didn't um, take the flywheel off. I wasn't able to get that off. Definitely a decent amount of scoring. Oh boy, there is definitely piston slap going on. Now, I do see something kind of interesting here. Evidence of the piston slap right there. Just a little bit. The uh, Inside of the cylinder is definitely scratched up. And if you guys look really closely there, looks like the inside of the cylinder is actually worn pretty good. Now this part right here was where it would have been leaking from. There's the exhaust valve. But it's definitely some scoring along the skirt. The rings aren't broken. What I suspect is based on how black the oil was in this motor before I took it apart is the prior owner did not change the oil as often as they should have. Now while it had oil in it and it lasted and seemed to run fine, it looks like that over time, based on neglect of maintenance, uh, the motor just appears to have worn out. But the weird thing is, and I can't see anything for sure yet. Some scoring right here. Those are some scratches. 
can feel my fingernail going into those grooves. The uh, bottom part of the crankshaft where the rod connects to is scored up a little bit. Ooh. Yeah, that's definitely a little bit of a scoring. Yeah, this thing, it ran fine, but it just started spitting oil out like nothing nothing I've ever seen before. This definitely was an oil burner. There's no way around that. So, now I've got a bunch of spare parts, just in case this one ever messes up. At least the carburetor's the same. These don't even look all that worn, to be honest. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This uh, disassembly and tear down of this quantum motor. This thing is a salvageable carb, good magneto, good uh, air cleaner box that I can pull off. But I mean, even the muffler is probably good too. But I'll catch you guys.